all our clients can communicate our story super, super simple to their customers. Mm -hmm. For example, if we are building a restaurant interior, of course, now that restaurant can tell our story to their clients, that the tables are built with hundreds of thousands of recycled chopsticks that their clients have eaten with. You've got way bigger ambitions than just chopsticks, right? This was kind of your, your V1. It's, it's a story that gets us uh, in every door because it's, you know, it's almost like a very innocent story that, uh, that big brands can, can, can commit to. You know, they're like, okay, the chopstick guy is calling me. Of course, I'm going to work with him and, and uh, his great team because there's no greenwashing. It's very transparent. It's super easy to understand. And all our clients can communicate our story super, super simple to their customers. Mm -hmm. For example, if we are building a restaurant interior, of course, now that restaurant can tell our story to their clients that the tables and the beautiful feature walls are built with, you know, hundreds of thousands of recycled chopsticks that their clients have eaten with. Yeah. In, uh, so this is a simple story, but the model, you know, you're right. The model is really built to scale beyond chopsticks. So, you know, what else can we turn with the same manufacturing principles, you know, hyper local in all the cities that we're operating now? What else can we urban harvest and turn into a new innovative material and a commercial end product? That's obviously our three, four, five year plan now. Mm -hmm. And as you think about moving into these different geographies i mean i assume you're you're collecting and manufacturing do you do everything there and it sounds like yeah. you've got a lot going on yeah. in the background there i hear like a fork <laughs> yeah sorry that's why i'm that's okay. wearing headphones because that's okay you know, we never had to have this conversation of staff returning to work. They just, they're just like all back all of a sudden. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's a lot going on because we, within our facility, we, we call our concept a micro factory. So these micro factories, they're designed that in a, in a footprint of around 3000 square feet, we can, uh, we're handling the supply. So the reverse logistics where the material is coming in, we're handling the entire manufacturing process all the way to the end product fulfillment and distribution in the local market so that these micro factories can be fully independent businesses in every city where they pop up. Mm -hmm. So right now, you know, we, we can manufacture hyper local from coast to coast in North America because we have micro factories across Canada and the U S we also have micro factories now in Mexico, uh, Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, and I probably forgot a few countries that would be mad at me when they're listening wow. to this podcast, but it's really exciting for us to see that there are franchise partners. So we are, we are using franchising as a tool for growth. Mm -hmm. It's really exciting for us to see that other people invest into the brand, into the technology, and that they can actually understand mm -hmm. that this is how it can, how they can have an impact in their local community. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, I love, I love the whole end to end and the local, because like you said, you're taking this waste stream and you're, you're turning it into value. And so you just have to figure out where exactly do you want to put these? And so are you kind of in a, yeah. uh, like where are you in your kind of evolution? Like when did you start this? Or it sounds like you're really kind of growing mm -hmm. into these really interesting areas. Yeah, I think we're at the new inflection point and you, you don't know when this inflection point is coming until you're in the middle of it. So I started this around six years ago and that was just like that crazy beginning. I uh, couldn't believe that this crazy idea is actually a viable business model. Um, was flooded with chopsticks that I needed to then process into into end product. Here's my biggest ones I have, by the way. Perfect. Been drumming. Yeah, I'm not sure where you stole them, but I think they're actually serving chopsticks. You know, so my wife cooks with yeah. these. <laughs> oh, perfect. Yeah, that's why serving sticks. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like six years ago, we started this 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 adventure, and around uh, three years ago. Uh, we started franchising. So from from a single location in Vancouver to now over 60 locations in development around the world, that took us around two and a half to three years to develop. And and we have quite some traction. So, you know, that that commercialization track record helps us. Mm -hmm. uh, the technology is well perceived. It, it operates now in, in multiple countries. Uh, so that helps us to kind of build a really good structure. And, and I mean, I because we have bigger plans, I call it a global pilot, you know? So I think we're just at the beginning stage, but I think that's a, yeah. a founder syndrome. You're always saying you're at the beginning. You can always go bigger. Exactly. Well, I think, but back to your point, if you want to think big, you know, chopsticks, great. It gets you in the, I love, I love the, the genuine story. It gets you in the door, but also you're starting to build out these manufacturing. I mean, that's the real asset. If you can do that, figure out how to do yeah. that at scale, you continue to do a lot of interesting things on top of that platform. 
Yeah, yeah, you're right. You know, and you come from tech, so I love that you call it platform because I just learned this two weeks ago. Someone said, "Hey, Felix, what you're actually doing is you're building a platform, and then you can turn the switch yeah. into different resource streams because you already have existing facilities around the globe." And to back this up, we, you know, we we do life cycle assessments for each of our facilities so that we always know our carbon footprint. And the beautiful thing is, I think many companies they need to make a a compromise in how they scale because their their carbon footprint might be, um, you know, off if if they are scaling too fast. But in our business, every single facility is carbon negative. So the faster we grow, the better our carbon offsets. Yeah. So it's it's beautiful to know that th there is no such thing as too fast of a growth for us yeah. because that means just more waste is converted into end product and uh, more carbon is offset and stored in, in our beautiful functional end products yeah. as a revenue stream. It's like the, it's like the greatest yeah. byproduct.